Chapter 25, The Seven Fundamental Numbers. Those are the first five divisions of God. They are represented by the five limbs surrounding the human torso, the legs, arms, and neck, and also by the five fingers and toes. For the purposes of teaching the fundamental origins of numbers, the middle finger is associated with one, or divine unity. The middle finger and ring finger together represent two, or soulmates, man and woman. The middle finger, ring finger, and small finger all together represent three, man, woman, and child, or the manifestation of reality in the universe. The pointing finger by itself represents seven, the number of completion. The thumb, which stands aloof by itself from the other fingers, represents 12, which is not derived from the previous numbers in the way that the others before it are. By symmetry, the five fingers become 10 fingers, and 10 naturally becomes the basis for counting. If you study the counting systems of our ancestors, the best recorded example being that of the ancient Egyptians, you'll see that they use 10 as the basis for counting. Their week had 10 days, their day had 10 hours from sunrise to sunrise, and each hour had 100 minutes. Each minute had 100 seconds for a total of 100,000 seconds from sunrise to sunrise, corresponding to the total number of heartbeats per day in our ancient bodies. A second was measured by one heartbeat and a minute was measured by 100 heartbeats. Because of the deterioration of our bodies, our heartbeats have increased from 100,000 per day to about 110,000. But that is the explanation for the basis of our ancient clock and calendar system, and it was founded on the number 10. This system of counting was copied by succeeding civilizations and remains so to this day. Now, by repetition of the number 12, the gods surrounded themselves with 12 assistants each. They became the 144 chiefs. By using the number 10 repeated three times for a total of 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10, the 144 chiefs chose 1,000 assistants each who became the 144,000 judges. By symmetry of soulmates, the 12 gods became 24 elders and hence all the chiefs and judges were also chosen in soulmate couples, every man and his wife, every woman and her husband. The 144,000 judges did like the chiefs and chose 1,000 people to lead in their town and the population on earth became 144 million. The 24 elders allowed each citizen 7,000 years to live and two children per couple, one child to replace each citizen. The population doubled and then became two times 144 million or 288 million. The children grew up and became adults and they too had two children per couple, tripling the population to three times 144 million. A new generation was born every 1000 years and this continued for seven generations until the total population reached its natural maximum of seven times 144 million or 1 billion, 8 million. After that, when a new generation of 144 million people were born each millennium, the same number of senior citizens passed away, having lived 7,000 years. And so 1 billion, 8 million became the fixed and permanent population on earth. That's how God became the sacred number of 1 billion, 8 million people who are the same 1 billion, 8 million black people alive today. That is the maximum population for a planet the size of Earth in order for the people to live in perfect comfort. It allows complete freedom of movement over the whole Earth as well as proper land development without being overbearing on the natural resources or imposing on the plants and animals. Any number beyond this maximum is overpopulation. The world today is grossly overpopulated by six times its natural capacity. In other words, by an amount equaling the number of non-Blacks on Earth. 